and welcome back to the EMEA Masters Spring Edition. I'm still Medic, this is still Boxer, and we are here for our, our final game of the day. There will be other casters after us for the final three games. Uh, but yes, Team Goat versus Anathosis Famagusta. Likely to be a one-sided affair with how Team Go have been playing. Team Go have been incredible so far. This was, this was the first game we've seen from them where they didn't absolutely dismantle their opponents in the early game. SK Gaming was able to fight back at the very least up until the 20-22 minute mark. Uh, then Team Go got, got angry and decided to strike back. But essentially what we're about to see is the best early game team in the group against what is so far the worst early game team. So and officers are going to have to come in with a good early game plan uh, in order to survive versus Team Go. Earlier we saw them changing up the style pretty heavily. Uh, they locked, locked in a team comp which was centered around a lot of playmaking champs. We, we saw a Pike, we saw a Kaiser, we saw a Gwen and it simply didn't work out for them. They did not look as comfortable with that style and what has worked for them in the past has actually been team fighting uh, not being in a position where they have to go for spicy flanks out plays but just being able to stay coordinated group as a ball and then play as a unit and i hope that's what we're going to see from them but like i mentioned they're still going to need some early centric champion in order to survive and we'll see what they can do let's have a look at their lineup as we we talk through some of the possibilities for this team we have seen some good things and when we talked to banderas earlier on today he said haw haw is is the key for this team if you give haw haw something he can carry on then you can put yourself in a really strong position but we've also seen Ayla in in the top lane have incredibly good performances especially his gragas uh, on tuesday he was a key reason that this team was able to win out in 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 some of the fights and for me uh spooky as well has been pretty incredible especially in their win uh, versus sk gaming prime uh two days ago on viego and all in all all these players have had moments of brilliance moments where they were able to shine individually but it's just a bit about getting on the same page being a well coordinated team and sometimes they're able to but there's also a lot of times where you know that's a little miscommunication and that's where they usually fall and fall apart in the middle late game let's see if they can get away from that miscommunication i'd love to see Horho zillion let through just one just do it you know for one game go just be like yeah just give him zillion he's got an 83 percent win rate on this champ i think he's lost one out of 12 game or two out of 12 games um and but if any team's going to do it in the group It'll probably be, we'd be team go as well. You know, they can have a little bit of confidence in themselves because they have been far and away the, the, the best team so far in the group, have already qualified for our top eight as well and, and have shown that they can do it in, I was going to say lots of different styles, but it's basically the same style just with different looks for them. You know, have a solid front line into Jezu in the back line, just being a Jinx or a Zeri and, and doing a huge amount of damage. And I actually liked what SK Gaming uh, did this previous game, taking the Siri away from Jesu, forcing him onto Jinx. But Jesu was able to prove that even though he had won three games of Siri so far this tournament and played nothing else, he is completely able to play other champions and shine on the likes of Jinx or the carries when need be. He also has had a big uh, amount of success on Sire in the past. And again, this is going to be the ultimate test. Go are going to have a chance to cement themselves as the clear best team in the group. Obviously, quarterfinal has been secured, but the previous game versus SK Gaming wasn't the most convincing wins of theirs. Uh, and they're going to be fighting against other forces who are really going to have their backs against the wall this time around. Yeah, and for an Anathosis, it's, it's a big, big game because if you do end up going one and three, I think you are not mathematically eliminated but you're in a really tricky spot uh, to make it out of this group currently sitting at one and oh they're already one and three if you go one and four sorry it becomes very tricky because you need everyone then to go two and four whereas riddle obviously could get to can still get to three wins uh, as can sk gaming prime so just going to be a uh a hard position for the the greek team and after a couple of strong performances last week i thought maybe we'd see a little bit more from them but they they've definitely struggled to 
really hit the top tier of their their possible level. I think in in a way, so far, the way this group has shaped up reminds me a little bit of uh, playing group stage at Worlds back in the day where you have one team, typically a Korean team, that is just absolutely demolishing everyone. Mm -hmm. And then the three others have to, to try to fight uh, for the crumbs, try to fight their way into the quarterfinal. Uh, regardless, go obviously so far being the the Korean team, so to speak, uh, while, while still not being being flawless, have been, been so solid. Um, but really excited for this matchup. I think if an officer is to take this one home, it's going to have to come from the mid and jungle duo. Both Spooky and Ho Ho have been looking pretty solid uh, this tournament, even in losses. And if they are able to shut down Tukui and Lunces, there's hope that they might be able to, you know, take it home, or at the very least, give Team Go a run for their money. Yeah, it's just going to be a really tricky one. To, to deal with i think uh we are getting ready for the next game obviously because the game finished relatively quickly we are just having to uh, take a moment as everyone gets set up and with it being team go playing two games back to back as well we like to give them a little bit longer of a break but here we are into the game an orthosis famagusta on the blue side team go 4-0 on the red let's see if that zillion does manage to sneak through so typically, typically, like you already mentioned, we see Cillian uh, being perma banned against Anaphasis. Uh, no one wants to give Tukui on Team Go uh, LeBlanc on the other side. Annie is a very common ban. Gragas is a ban. I think it's just a matter of time before we see him being banned more by the red side because blue side always first picks him and he's just such a safe blind. And you know, now the only real uh, surprise or possible opening in this draft would be the Cillian that still has not been banned away. Cillian, Cillian, Cillian. Leave it open, Team Go. Because uh, Anorthosis and uh, Famagusa here obviously have a, a, a plethora of bans. You could go Zeri if you want to. You could get rid of something like the Wukong. Get rid of Linkers' Lee as well if you so desire. Let's see if Team Go give the time wizard over to Anorthosis and Famagusta. Um, for the moment, I, the, yeah. I, I think this Lee ban must be because they want to first pick Wukong. I don't see why else you would ban it away. Lee is a champion who actually has a not easy time dealing with Wukong, but who can at the very least match him in most phases of the early and mid game. Uh, a lot of junglers have already been taken away. Hecarim is a champion that Anaphasis have had some success with in the past. And sometimes when you're already in a good spot, you just want to ban the unknown factors. Hecarim is probably not something Go has scrimmed and practiced against a lot. Therefore, they ban it away. And Anathosis actually decide to go for, for me, surprise first pick. Because sure, Sire is a good champion. But Go still has a lot of their favorites up and available. They could look for the Wukong if they wish. They could look for Rakan. They can look for Kennen. Series open. They can get pretty much whatever they want. Well, they're locking the Rakan to start things off here. As you say, can still go towards that Zeri. There's the Wukong. So, uh, obviously, the Zaya Pryo here biting an Athosis Famagusta a little bit is that it means they don't get their uh, premier jungle pick. But immediately, Spooky's going to lock in the Kindred. There's the rail. I like this. This is aggressive. This is team fight. This is exactly what you want to see from a team whose lives in the tournament hang in the balance. And Rel is a champion that I, Levi, has had a huge amount of success with in the GLL, in the regional league. And all in all, I think the draft from Anathesis does make a lot of sense. Um, we get strong AD carry, comfort pick for support. We get a Kindred who hard counters uh, the engage coming out of Rakan and Wukong. Uh, still slightly worried that Team Go has been given really really strong comfort picks across the board uh, because while you're getting um, strong picks on on an Athos side you have literally given the opponents anything they could dream of that is always the issue right like it's we want comfort but by taking comfort for ourselves we give them the, the, the meta you know we give them exactly what they want as well so it, it's very much an Orthosis Famagusta saying we are willing to play you at what we think is our best and if your best is better than that cool 
you know like we're not going to try and out mind game you we're not going to try and out draft you well obviously we're trying to out draft you but we're not going to do something sneaky we're just playing what we think is good for us and obviously zillion's still a, a possibility as it hasn't been banned out in this second phase the galio and the Cho'Gath removed alongside the olaf from anathos famagusta uh, if you were looking, as we wait for this final band, the slide is coming out. If you were looking in the background, that was Kiki. It's her birthday today, her fourth birthday. So very important that, you know, we celebrate that. I gave her some chicken earlier today, so she's a happy I'm, I'm pretty sure this is where we need a lot of happy birthdays in the chat for <laughs> Kiki. Get it going, chat. You know what to do. Uh, in the meantime, team go blind picking Ari, something they were also very comfortable doing. In the previous matchup against SK, obviously worked out perfectly uh, for them. Tukui didn't die a single time on the Ari. And Ragnar is a player who loves counter picks, who loves being able to play carries in top lane. So saving the last pick for him is something they can be very satisfied with. Like uh, you mentioned before, Medic, Cillian is still available. They do decide to opt into the Vega instead, though. This is a pick I'm. A little bit worried about, mostly because while in mid and late game team fights, Vega can have a big impact against Ghost Comp, he's not gonna have much pressure in the early game yeah. versus Ari. And I'm a little worried about the early game in particular. Malphite, a champion that, you know, we've seen have a lot of success uh, recently. Very strong top lane champion. But. Let's see what Go decides to counter pick with. Is it actually going to be a more top into the Malphite? AP damage obviously great into Malphite because he loves to build armor and all his abilities scale off his armor. So uh, it does give you a little bit more threat up towards that top lane. Uh, and looks like he's going to get locked in. Okay. Okay. I did hear a discussion uh, a while ago about whether or not you can ult Mal Malphite as he is uh, ulting forward as Mordekaiser. You can't. You can't ult him out of his own ult. Like he's still. He's unstoppable, so he always connects, right? But you can ult Kindred into the Shadow Realm. And is there is there her ultimate in the Shadow Realm? No, it doesn't exist. So you can take her out of her own ultimate, basically, if she's trying to survive on low HP. And that's the beauty of it. It doesn't only go for Kindred. Mordecai can walk up and ult anyone standing inside the Kindred or basically choose exactly who he wants to destroy one versus one in the Death Realm. On top of that, he gets a really good top lane matchup into Malphite. Uh, I have a little bit of a feeling that Anaphosis might regret picking Malphite instead of the likes of Scion, yep. uh, who's a lot more stable and better overall. But again, this is a do or die game for them, and they're just trying to, you know, not only play comfort, but play something that Go couldn't be prepared for and catching them off guard, really. Yeah, I will say, even if they lose this game, I think they could still match up with other teams at two and four. So Riddle would have to lose both their games and SK Prime would have to win one. So we could have that three-way tie at two and four, but very do or die anyway, because if you pick up this win, it puts you in a really good spot to maybe make it out of the group as the second seed. Team Go, though, looking to continue their undefeated streak through the EMEA Masters. And it has been, it hasn't really looked like an undefeated streak that was going to end at any point so far. They've looked in control of the majority of their games. Medic, Roxanne. I am not sure if you're aware, but there's a special support in this game. Oh, and I'm very much looking forward to seeing if Team Go has forced Camellia to watch your streams <laughs> to learn how to play Rakan from the best Rakan that I've ever seen in my life. And I have high expectations because after dual queuing with you and seeing you on Rakan, Yep. Other accounts can almost only disappoint, really. I mean, Camillus is a pretty good player, man. So I, I, I don't want well, to yeah, shoot so you on me, you know? You, you are the best Rakan, there's no doubt about it. But with that being said, Camillus actually so far this season 7 0 on Rakan, hasn't lost a single game on the champion. And I'm sure he's happy, he's confident, and he's ready to make uh, Papa Medic. The god Rakan himself proud. One can only hope. We are just waiting on a, uh, a router to reset because one of the players was having a couple of ping issues. So we'll get that sorted as soon as we can. For now, though, here's the roster again. In case you've forgotten their names from when we cast them, you know, five minutes ago. Ragnar, Linkus, Takuri, Jezu, and Camilius round out this Team Go roster. They, uh, 
came into the tournament as the second seed from the LFL, losing, of course, to LDLC in the finals. But, uh, for, the, uh, for the last while, uh, Voxer, it has felt like EMEA Masters is kind of LFL's, you know, punching ground. It's just they come here, they show off for a little bit, and then they go back and compete in their own league. Uh, do, you, do you see a possibility of any other region like starting to challenge the LFL's dominance? At the moment, uh, it doesn't really seem that way. LFL do seem, you know, to just be one step ahead of, of everyone else of the com competition. But at the same time, I also remember the days where going into every Worlds tournament, everyone expected Korea to be unbeatable. Eventually, Europe started showing up, L LPL in particular started showing up and, you know, started dominating. And I think for EU Masters, EMEA Masters, sorry, it's just a matter of time before we start seeing the shift as well. Because getting to the top is one thing, but staying there for many years as a time is, while not an impossible, very, very difficult task to do. Curious to see how the, the rest of the tournament is going to play out for, for the LFL so far. Uh, of course, with, with Go and LDLC both looking very dominant, but here on your screen, we have a team who's ready. Who's ready to show what they're made of, who's ready to hopefully showcase that the Greek League can compete. Yeah, we'll see if they're able to do it. You know, it's, uh, it's always going to be a challenge when you're coming up against uh, not only a team, but a region that is seen as the best in Europe, or at least the best in the ERLs. I think we have seen some great signs of life from a North Assist Famagusta. We've seen some really strong moments from them, but it's all individual moments and not always tied together. You know, the only time I think we saw them cohesively play for a full game as a team was the uh, the SK Gaming Prime game that we watched a couple of days ago. If they are able to pick up a win here against Team Go, obviously a huge accomplishment for them as a team. Later on today, they do still have uh, matches where they can start to, uh, where they can challenge. I think they still got to play uh, SK Gaming Prime today as well, right? That's the one game we haven't seen from them. Yeah, that's at the end yes. of the day at 10 p.m. So that could be the game that gets them into a, a possible quarterfinal berth. But we'll, we'll have to wait and see. A good old 10 p.m. banger, patiently waiting for that final, potentially deciding game. But for now, the game is starting up. We see the two teams on our screens. Two tanks in the top lane, most likely not going to be any action around top. In the early stages, we see Vega, uh, Final Forces versus Ari. On go, one of the challengers, Final Forces, in the early game could be controlling Tukui on Ari, who's going to be looking to push in, roam, and have an impact. But, at the same time, if they can deal with him and shut him down, giving Ho-Ho some time to scale, that Vega can be incredibly, incredibly beneficial. Of course, whenever Kindred is in the game, we are going to need to keep an eye out for the early Mark spots. So we see Alip there pretty much doing something that top laners consider very illegal. The two top laners were standing, looking each other in the eye, decides to pop the Q on Ragnar. Yeah, that's rude. And... That, that's that's pretty rude, pretty disrespectful thing to do. But um, again, uh, Kindred's in the game. Marks are gonna spawn on either of the two crabs. Um, they could either decide to handshake and basically say we're gonna get one crab each, or look for a fight on the crab. Seems like uh, with the starts we're having that uh, Lunters expects Spookies to start red buff on Kindred, which is the most standard thing to do. He's gonna start blue with a leash uh, to counter it. Wukong in general has a pretty slow first clear, so that leash is gonna speed him up quite a lot. Actually decides to skip his Gromp, uh, which I find pretty interesting. Looking forward to see what the, the rest of the path is gonna be from here. Uh, but all in all, we can expect both of these two junglers to path those top side. Look for the top crap, a meaning that mid and top prior is going to be pretty important they could potentially look to skip a camp in a minute or so uh, to help their solo lanes secure prior but we'll see how it plays out it could be looking towards a uh, bot gank possibly early here we're going wolves then back to gromp uh, is that... i i think it might be a mind game actually because Anaphosis knows that Jesu and Camille is leashed. Mm -hmm. They know there's not going to be, or they expect them uh, not to get any backup anytime soon. No mind, Lunkus 
decides uh, not to go for the bot lane. I think he was looking for it. Uh, this, you know, it must be a mind game where if they walk up expecting Wukong to be topside, you go for the bot gank. If you don't, sure, you wasted a couple of seconds moving to Wolves and then back to Grump, but it's not the end of the world. Crap is going to be spawning on top side here in 40 seconds. We see Tukui pushing Vega on the turret as expected. Ragnar is now going to be fighting to secure top prior for his jungle as well. And if Spooky doesn't get any help from his solo lanes, it's not going to be that pleasant matching this Wukong because Lynxas is just walking into the river right away. He wants to be there early and he wants to make sure that this crap belongs to him his way up towards this top side you can see spooky is in the area as well link is coming forward does still have the smite so does spooky the blue buff sitting at 1.3k we're now reset spooky spotted on this ward haw haw looking for that mid lane fight i levy going for a little bit of action as spooky has to flash away it's the 3v2 though link is goes back in towards spooky uses the flash himself event horizon going down to kui locked up i levy coming across but Linkus is going to stop his path for the moment. Flashes away from the charm. Ragnar gets the pullback. Oh, oh, flashes away in a 3v4 now. The re-engage comes out for my levy with the Feromancy. Linkus trying to dash away. Jumps onto Spooky. Gets it. Gets first blood. Ragnar forced off towards this top side as Eilif almost goes down. But another remount comes out. It's three for one in favor of Anathosis. Huge roam here from I Levi moving out from the bot lane. Team Go clearly wasn't expecting it. May have may or may not have called it out, but either way, big mistake from Camellius not moving. He wasn't able to achieve anything in the bot lane. In the meantime, I Levi secures a huge lead for his team. Found a great engage um, or follow up engage in the fight as well. And all in all, pretty much a perfect start here for Anaphosis. And we're about to see the replay right here. First of all, Lunz is really smart, um, only doing four camps of his jungle, so we're able to invade Spooky early. Spooky has to flash out because Wukong, unfortunately for him, is favored in that matchup. And Wukong, at the same time, is much more healthy. I Levi appears in the mid lane, catching the Kui of guard, managed to chunk him. And now, look at the flash out into re engage. Here it comes. Keep an eye on the rail. Huge engage, managed to knock up both of them. Spooky walking a little bit too far up if he kept his distance. Linces wouldn't have gotten a single kill in that scenario and it would have been even more brutal. But still, big fight for Anaso Anaphosis and now, all of a sudden, they don't have to be as worried about the early game. They should be able to get some form of control around the dragon that is already available here. We see a mark spawning on Team Ghost Grump. Pretty impossible, unfortunately, for Spooky to walk in. Uh, fought out but all in all good start for them now they will be looking to get level six and start securing, securing some objectives yeah and for the moment it's all guns blazing for anorthosis famagusta they're in such a strong position 700 gold ahead and the question i mean the, the thing is there's always a certain inevitability with these sorts of games where it feels a little bit like well you know go will just hand stiff them in the end but all you have to do is an Orthosis Famagusta is keep doing what you're doing. Just keep having a few moments like this. And you actually put yourself in a position where Team Go can't just hand it. Because you're, you know, a thousand, two thousand, three thousand gold in the lead. So if they can keep up this tempo, if they can keep up this pressure, it's a really good sign for the GLL team. Oh, definitely. And you know, when you reach a certain level as a league player. Sure, mechanics and hands come into play, but a lot of it is about communication and team play. That's why so often in the past, in the play-in stage at Worlds, for example, we've seen teams falter uh, as a play-in teams who managed to catch the opponents off guard. The same thing can happen here. Sure, an individual skill level is one thing, but if you can be the better team on the day, League is a game that is so volatile and where now, with the advantage, maybe we're going to see an forces Go for a clean snowball. Kindred coming out of base, moving towards the red buff. Dragon is still up, Herald is up in a minute. And the way for them to continue snowballing is to find a, a way to continue involving I Levi in the game. They're gonna have you know a lot of pressure around the bot lane, Ho Ho. Despite getting a kill, still has a bit of a hard time fully involving himself early on as Vega, but he can try to follow to Kui. And now with the bot lane pushing in spooky wants to look for the dragon so he can afterwards start shifting his attention to Harold. and it's the 
first neutral objective of the game. Over to Anorthosis. Uh, Anorthosis. Uh, with it still a thousand gold ahead. Obviously, that sitting on the support isn't really the ideal target. A little bit on Alif up towards that top lane as well with his kill and assist. Uh, and we'll see how they continue to attempt to extend this lead. And they do have a strong team fight as well. Obviously, the Malphite Ultimate alongside an Event Horizon from the Vega can do a lot of work for you. The issue is that Zeri has the, and the Wukong, actually. The uh, ability to control areas and to control the map can be very tricky into those combined ultimates. At the moment, though, Look it looks Camilius like... Uh, well, yeah, Linsus is just going to start up the Rift Herald. You can see Camellius has already moved up towards this top side. Levy on his way, but never going to be here in time, especially with the reset coming out from Hall. And now we see Camellius with a smart base, knowing that an officer's took the early dragon with will uh, supporting and assisting camellius instantly bases moves the top side with his jungler secures herald before uh, the opponents have a chance of responding and nice objective trade and the best thing they could have done while playing from behind in this position now the jungle dynamic changes a little bit because at this point spoopy is going to have to try to match linsa's wherever he goes you don't want to give this monkey a chance to pop the herald and get a full turret or you know even three or four plates you gotta make sure that you keep tracks of him and that you are able to shut him down team fights uh, despite the 1k gold lead can still go either way kindred of course very strong in the ghost composition but the strength of the ultimate also heavily depends on where on the map they fight because if mordecai is involved like we spoke about going into the game his ult is so strong with his kindred, he can just grab anyone out of the ult, kill them in the death realm, and all of a sudden it's a very different fight. Definitely will be. That's for the time being, though. Feels like Anorthosis are willing just to keep the game at a relatively slow pace. You can see Spooky actually only sitting on one stack. If you look underneath his name on the left side of your screen, that little one. At the top of the Kindred portrait shows us exactly how many stacks he's sitting on and Team Go are looking to try and keep his blue away from him as well. Good smite there from Spooky means that he secures it as he jumps across the wall and doesn't lose out on anything from his own jungle. Camellius looking for something in the mid lane. Does mean that Jezu will be by himself down towards this bottom side of the map for a couple of moments. You can see I Levy and Golden Toast using that time to get the wave pushed in to get some damage on the tower. Should be a plate for them. Camellius might look for the flank. Actually, three plates now in total. And that gold lead in the bottom lane is starting to transfer over to the AD carry as well. Yeah, definitely. We are, we're seeing an officer so far with... We're all... Um, Dragon is coming up in two minutes. We see Linsas not finding any good opportunities on the map. Deciding to pop the Herald mid lane to secure two plates for himself and his mid laner and slowly but surely we're going to start seeing both of these teams focus on getting the dragon now mm -hmm. at the moment Rakhna does have top priority none of the top laners have TP available and an officers are most likely going to have to influence that top lane matchup if they want to be able to fight the dragon because Rakhna can always move first alternatively Ilip might have to drop a wave to beat it on time but let's see how it plays out. Both teams slowly but surely starting to get their final resets off and looking for a setup around the dragon. And yeah, with it being a minute before the dragon does spawn, Camellius actually looking for something here as he gets onto I Levy. He'll dash away with the Ferromancy, and even with the quickness from Camellius, it's not enough to lock anyone up. Uh, spooky. It was just up towards the top side of the map, stealing away the Krugs, I believe. May have actually, I don't know if he got the red buff, but that's the location where he was based. Camellius, no ultimate for this next dragon. Spooky's got a Kraken Slayer complete. Divine Sundra on Linkus means that he is very powerful for this next fight as well. But the big thing being, there's no ultimate on that Rakan, which does limit your options when it comes to a fight. Team Go were able to get some deep vision, but. Is it going to be enough for uh, for them to actually set up around this dragon? 
Yeah, we'll see team go. Very good vision uh, around the dragon right now. Spooky. Uh, moving down towards his crocs. It seems like they simply decide to give it up uh, to their opponents. They do have a lead, but the setup simply is not there. And despite being down, Dragon is going to go over to Team Go. A really good setup by them. They were fully on point uh, with their vision. Golden Toe spacing way too late, and there's just nothing Anaphosis can do to, to stop this from happening, really. Charm goes down on Spooky. He's locked up. No time for the Lamb's Respite. That vision control paying dividends for Team Go. They get the Dragon. They're looking for a little bit more. As Hawhaw has to flash away from the Orb Deception. He will escape towards the mid lane, but all it is is moments like this that lose you your lead, that lose you the advantage that you gained in the early game. And although Anorthosis Famagusta are still a thousand gold ahead, they're now a dragon down and their jungler got caught out. And this is one of those moments that are going to ha haunt Anorthosis after the game. One of the moments you look at and where you are so sad seeing the replay and what could have been because they were having an advantage, they shouldn't have given up Drake to begin with, but not only that, Spooky doesn't recognize that Drake is already gone, walks into it aggressively while all of Team Go is there, easy pick up for them, and all of a sudden, sure, they're still down, but they're in a much better position than they were in just one minute ago. Rift Herald is spawning in 40 seconds, Camillo is basing early, wants to beat on time, I Levi is gonna have uh, to follow up to the top side soon if he wants to be interested in contesting, and for now, sneakily looking for Jesso. Keep in mind, Jesso hasn't died a single time yet in this tournament. And he decided the time wasn't yet. Play safe, expects to play from his opponents, simply one step ahead. And Camellius now is on the other side, ready to help his team getting Herald. Part of the power of Zevi as well is you can just fly up towards the top side of the lane, and even if. I Levy and Golden Toasted like tried to fully invest into you. You've got a long wall, a long bit of terrain that you can just skip your way over and slide to safety. First tower of the game does go over to Anorthosis as they uh, manage to secure it in the bot lane. Rift Herald though, four team go. They use the first one in the mid lane. To try and get some chip damage on that tower. And it's still a gold lead for Anorthosis Famagusta. They're still in a strong position, but Spooky may be caught out once again. The knock-up with the grand entrance. Death Realm now for Spooky. He manages to get over the wall, but you can't oh, the escape snipe. the slam. Ragnar spots him and kills him off. And once again, it's the Anorthosis Famagusta jungler that gets caught out. At first, I thought that was a pretty optimistic play from Ragnar <laughs> because he didn't, you know, have any way to get over the wall to catch Spooky. Spooky, on the other hand, didn't have vision on Ragnar, didn't see the Q animation coming over the wall. Even though he had Lamps Respite avail available, wasn't able to pop the ult and survive. And a few oopsies coming out of the Anaphosis jungle here. Not the, the greatest start from him, also only has one single mark on Kindred. There's a long way to go to reach the four mark power spike, which is where you want to be, because that's where you get not only better stats, but also 75 extra attack range. Great comeback plays from Team Go, showing why they're considered um, probably the best team in this group, at least up until this point. And Anaphosis are now going to look for a play on Ragnar, but whew, it's a sketchy one. Ragnar's team is going. Yeah, the rest of Go are on their way. There's the quickness, there's the charm, and it's desperation stations for Anorthosis Famagusta. Team Go now bring that gold lead back within 300, and everything that Anorthosis Famagusta try and do is just absolutely slammed back at them. It is, I mean, you said Team Go are probably the best team in this group. I, I think we can say they're definitively the best team in this group. Even if they lose this game, they're still four, they'd still be four and one. They'd still be topping the charts. They'd still be the first team to qualify for our quarterfinals. And you can see what I Levy and Golden Toast are trying to do, but you're just never going to work your way through this Mordekaiser quickly enough. This right here is pretty much pure desperation. They knew Mordekaiser's older flash were down, but Look at his items, he's still one very, very tanky champion, and Sire, which is one item. Sure, she can deal some damage, but enough to dive a level 7 Mordekaiser, whew, maybe not. Anaphosis are gonna have to try to chill a bit uh, now. They're in a different position, still up on gold, but whew, they're not able to pressure as much anymore. We're gonna need to see them just toning it down, really, not being so nervous. I think 
It reminds me of seeing solo queue in a way where everyone always feels like they need to be the carry, they need to make plays, they need to make something happen. But if you're over eager, if you're not waiting for your opponents to walk up and make an actual mistake, you're going to be the inder and not them. You're going to be the one caught with your pants down and you're going to end up giving gold away for absolutely no reason. Once again, looking for a play on Ragnar. Ragnar doesn't have ult available and it's going to be very hard to kill here. Oh, he does. It comes up just in time. He catches Spooky with it. Hits him with the obliterate over the wall as well. And because of that, Ragnar's just able to stay underneath this tower and survive. Now, Anathosis may invest more time into him. The next wave coming forward this time. For sure the Mordekaiser will die. Event Horizon goes wide, the knockup turns land, there's the stun, there's the CC. And in the end, Ragnar will fall for it though. A dragon is the price to be paid as Team Go get their second on the board. The charm coming out, Kui dashing in with the Spirit Rush, dashes out of the Event Horizon. Second mark of the game for the Kindred. And now they may look for Takui as well. Does have flash available, gonna be hard to take him down entirely. Spooky also doesn't have flash to follow. And manages to push him out. Can now get the top turret for themselves and get a little bit of gold back. And speaking of, if you do look at the gold, Anaphosis, they're in a great spot. There are 2k gold up on their opponents, but they will still need to clean up the play a little bit, and despite uh, giving up Mordekaiser and a turret, I'm pretty sure Go are fairly happy with the trade, securing a second dragon for themselves, and with time, getting closer and closer to more power spikes. Mordekaiser, Ari, uh, Siri as well as Wukong, looking all uh, to get their second items. Saya has already finished the second one, Ho Ho on Vega, getting close to Rabadon, and at this point, there's a very <laughs> <laughs> great little moment there. Both uh, Camellios and Spooky <laughs> taking portals, saying uh, goodbye to each other on the way. Um, but yeah, at this point, there's no dragons up for a while. Baron is available, but it's 20 minutes in the game, so it's very difficult to actually take it down. Um, the focus for both teams really going to be to continue cracking uh, tier 1 turrets. Go is going to want to look for side lane plays and, uh, and officers want to crack the mid tower um, and we'll see if these teams can manage to put their foot on the gas pedal and push this game forward because so far the games we've seen today have been pretty slow, pretty methodical and this game is starting in the same way but someone's going to have to pressure now otherwise we're not going to see any tier 1s taken. Yeah I think the thing is though if you're team go you don't really have to force right like Yes, obviously it'd be nice to take these tier ones a little bit quicker, but also you you have a Zeri, right? You can just scale into this game. Obviously the Vega becomes a bit more of a problem as the game goes on, but that Zeri will be very happy to get three items before you start full fighting. You can just wait for this next dragon in two and a half minutes time. That would put you on Hex Soul points as well. TP now invested from Aelip as he pushed in all the way to the tier two in the bottom lane. So go do start losing some uh minions to that tier two down there but in the end all's well that ends well for both teams you know top lane tower still stands for a narcissus famagusta and go get the tp out of ayla at this point two minutes left on this dragon uh we're gonna see a pass by coming in for ho ho here as he finishes rabadon 2k gold leads uh, still remaining for anaphasis and now for both sides, really, it's going to come down to setting up vision around the dragon. Uh, both teams have very strong front lines and carries, and whoever has the vision around dragon, whoever forces the opposition to face check, is most likely going to be able to secure the objective. Keep in mind, this next fight is going to be one of the bigger ones, because now that Baron is up, if you get a big team fight and you come out on top, it can translate into a Baron, which can then translate into finally getting some turrets for your team. Let's see which team is able to properly set up around this next objective. And Orthosis is going to be able to get the Scuttle Crab up towards this top side. Spooky still only on two stacks on the Kindred. Not the position you want to be in. And it becomes even more tricky as the game does go on because your stacks move from originally just on your own jungle camps or on the Scuttle Crabs to then. Uh, sorry, on the Scuttle Crabs, then onto the enemy jungle camps. Now onto those big neutral objectives. It becomes harder to get them. 
unless you're managing to pick up kills or assists. Yet to get a kill this game. Rabadon's complete though on Haw Haw with 245 sacks on the Vega. He's probably sitting at about, should we guess? I'm going to say 527 AP right now. What's your guess, Vance? That was a very specific guess, Medic. I'm going to say he probably has... Uh... <laughs> 600? 600, sure. okay, well, let's have a look. Oh, 650. Yeah, but in the time, in the time between me saying it originally. Oh, wow. Uh, he, he gained no more sets. Huh? <laughs> yeah, he, he actually got none, so you're entirely correct. 650 AP there on the Vega. The uh, the Baron was started for a second there. More of a, a water test. You know, you dip your toe in, you see, is it tepid? Do Team Go know that perhaps we're in this area. TP now coming into the mid lane. As Allhor is going to join back up with his team. Almost has that Seraph's complete. Tier fully stacked with the blasting one. But still a little bit away from getting that one all the way up. It does become a nuisance as the game goes on. Event Horizon does a lot of work. Especially around choke points like this. Team Go a little bit split here. You can see Linkus down towards the bottom side. Takui down there as well. Pushing the wave in towards that tier one. Would only be their second of the game. The dragon, though. Ragnar's going over Ragnar's here. Sneaky, sneaky. I mean, the problem is you see him, right? Linkus goes in. There's the cycle and there's the quickness. But the rest of the team are nowhere near to follow this up. Lamb's respite coming out. Ragnar's going to put him into the Lamb's respite. As Spooky's on the back line. Linkus already got one. Uh, Jezu trying to survive as well, but he has to flash away. And Golden Toast is on the offensive. Camellia's doing a bit of work as well as Ragnar. In the midst of four now, flashes away himself. In the end... And Orthosis get the dragon, get a kill, and get out. For some reason, Ragnar in this fight decided to ult Aelid on the Malphite. I'm gonna say it's Malphite. a misclick, Poxa. <laughs> <laughs> and we just saw Mordekaiser trying to battle a very unkillable Mal Malphite in the death realm. Um, you're gonna see it here in a moment. I believe Aelid was standing right on top of Spooky on the Kindred and yep. Ragnar with the misclick gets the wrong target. Spooky explodes and instantly dies anyways, but the two tanks are simply not part of the fight and not much uh, can really be done here. Four team go a little bit late uh, that they decided to join the party. Ideally they should have done that before the Drake was already down um, because at that point like I don't, an officers were already sitting near the mid lane. It was way further they had to go in to engage. If Ragnar went in, let's say, five seconds earlier, he might have been able to find a better flank. All in all, an officer's good play, 3k gold lead, got a second dragon for themselves. Still in a position where they haven't taken a single tier 2, but finally cracked uh, the last tier 1. And the next name of the game, Fossil. What am I witnessing? Go, where are we at? We're giving out a tier 2. Medic, this, I'm confused. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're playing this game really well because I think there was a few moments in the mid game, uh, in the early mid game, where Spooky got caught and died, right? And I, at that point in my brain, I was like, okay, Anorthosis had a good early game, but Go should be able to rest it out of their control now. But over the last, we'll say 10, 12 minutes, we've seen Anorthosis get a dragon, keep winning kills, keep the gold lead around two, 3,000, and continue to scale up. And for them, this is a, an incredible performance so far, especially when you consider like Go are undefeated up until this point. They're already through to our round of eight. So if an Orthosis can keep this up, it is a huge win because it's, it's not only a win, which is great, obviously, it not only gets them to two and three, but it also is a win against a team no one expects to win against, right? Everyone else is losing to Go. So if you can be the team that beat Go, I put you in a great position to make it out of this group. I Levy looking for something with Hex Flash, doesn't get it in the end. The Baron, the next setup for both these teams, with Drake being two minutes away. Uh, it's uh, a little bit tricky for them. Of course, Riddle could get out of this group as well. I think they have the head to head. I believe they beat Anorthosis twice, if I remember correctly. Yep. So if Riddle and Anorthosis tie, it would be Riddle going through. But you never know. Always, uh, always a possibility. Levy? 
Okay. You gotta slowly waddle your way away from the Baron. <laughs> That's it's the worst feeling as a well player. You jump in and you're like, boop, 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 boop. It's, you, you, never, you never get to get there quickly. Oh. So so far, Hanafas is just really playing some good, clean macro, which is the most impressive part. A great engage as well onto Camellius. Linkus was able to get away with Camellius not able to get out at all. Now the again, Baron. Speaking of the macro, right? Like the, the area was completely dark. Camellius walks in alone, trying to desperately check Baron. No vision, no it's knowledge gone. of what's about to happen to him. They managed to burst down the Baron. Wow. Like, yeah. Wow is right. People, most people came into this game expecting Go to have a huge advantage and probably dominate, but at this point, and officers, they're having the upper hand. Always first in the play, first to get control, first to set up vision, now also using the vision uh, to get a pick on their opponents. And with their team comp, they're starting to get real scary. Vega has three items at this point, Saya has three and a half. They have a really strong uh, engage in frontline and Malphite can be dual to buy time later when, you know, all the all in from Go comes in. And if they can keep playing as a unit and play to their comp's advantage, it's looking real good for the GLL team and they might actually be able to take down the LFL here. But I don't want to jinx them, of course, there's still work to do. But beautiful macro, love to see it. Yes, great performance so far. Bye. And this, this will be a sole point for them on this Hextech Drake as they secure their third of the game. Now they're pushing in towards this bottom side. All five players grouped up. Can be a little bit tricky to properly manage your ways in this sort of situation. Ayla pull back, but the tier two will fall. And, uh, I'm just going to quickly have to go away from my microphone as my cat's going to attack, but it looks like there might be a deep TP, so we'll come back and hope that the cat doesn't press any of the buttons on my mixer. Levy trying to jump across the wall here as the chase continues. Takui going in, flash away from Levy. Team go on the offensive. And Orthosis, though, could try for something. No flash on their support makes it a little bit tricky. For the well, moment, they're all just bad back. At the same time, either, because they did uh, force go uh, to burn the Ari all. They do have to set up now, get to push up with mod, bot, and mid lane. And spooky now, getting caught off guard on his own. We've seen this before, but can he get out this time? Certainly not the case. The idea is that. For an officers, they already have pushed out bot. Now one is a shift up towards the top side. They had to push and bottle in with Ilip. He was going to be able to join the team soon on the other side of the map. But Spooky gets a little impatient, gets a little over eager. And sadly, for an officers, ends up getting called out again. And he cursed them, Mads. It's the cast to curse coming to effect once again. <laughs> Whenever you say something good about a team, Immediately, they uh, someone ends up falling. Someone ends up getting caught out. Spooky not having the game of his career. I think we'll all agree. One and five currently on the Kindred. But still, hope for an Orthosis. As he did manage to break the tier two line on that last push. Took mid, took bot. But with Baron now expiring, it's uh, going to be a few minutes before we see that Baron come back up. Three minutes on the Drake as well. Three minutes on the Baron. Level 18 for Vega. Do you want to do, do another guessing game on his AP? I think we're getting close to 1,000 at this point. Maybe, I'm going to say 900. Okay, I was going to say 850 at 300 stacks. So we'll see. Oh, but it might be a fight first. Linkers hit. Camellius has a great flank position. They don't know. They don't know. They don't know. Camellius could come in. He's taking his time. Linkers goes back in with the Cyclone. The collapse already from Anathosis and the rest of Team Go not yet here to join. So Linkers first to fall, Camellia still waiting here. Aleph looking for something. Jezu can come across the wall as well and Ragno is there for a bit more action. No lands respite for Spooky. Camellia has the charm, has the quickness. Does not go in yet. There's the TP. As Sakui looks for a fine position, Spooky diving back forward to Ragnar. Five seconds on the Kindred Ultimate. Three, two, one, but he's dead before it even comes back up. The Lightning Crash being used as well by Jezu as they start to corral an Orthosis into a choke point. There's three already down. Looking to make it four as Aleph tries to get away, but Jezu's on the chase, still unkilled and doing a lot of killing himself. Hor, Hor likely to fall. Camellius can just walk around here. 
and every sign of life, every sign of hope for Nautis's Famagusta just collapses in an instant. This was uh, all in all uh, really impressive from Go finding the flank. Camellius was lingering around the corner, waiting, taking his time. If this was Solo Q, I think at this point, question mark pings would already have dropped with Camellius as. You know, you could worry about him actually being AFK, because let's see in the moment how long you're sitting there waiting for the opportunity. Good initial engage from Anathesis. Camellius is patient. He's a very patient man. Look <laughs> at him. He's not moving. Now he comes. Looking for the angle, but unfortunately for him, Anathesis had a ward available. Tsukui is able to TP back in after basing. And now it's a really difficult position for Anathesis to be in, because Go is able to find such a good angle two people coming in from areas from both sides essentially you know sandwiching the opponents and despite being a man up they were just not in a condition to fight anymore and go was able to take advantage of it yeah, the patience as you say from Camille is absolutely absurd the thing is he really needed jezu to be there right jezu is your key damage your your focal point of damage in these later game fights still Four items now finished on that Zeri. Uh, Takui has gone for the Rabadon's death camp, so it does put a little bit of DPS himself and nothing to be sniffed at. An auto assist though, still 2,000 gold ahead. Hextech Soul a possibility for them. Baron now spawning, Dragon in seven seconds and Team Go once again. We've seen a couple of times them make a few mistakes around Macro in this mid lane. Levy going in. There's Alip as well for a little bit more damage. The Lightning Crash coming out from Jezu does have that GA. Link is going to look for the flank position here as Anathosis Famagusta caught out a little bit up towards the bottom side of this jungle. Spooky pops the lands rest by Golden Toast trying to put the damage down as well as Magnus already fallen. Spooky's going to get a bit of healing, but now Anathosis one player down. Alip trading onto Lycus down towards the bottom side as Camellius will help him get the double. Link is trying to get away from this one. Golden Toast and Haw Haw opening up. They can't quite find it. And in the end, it's a two, uh, sorry, a one for three in favor of Team Go. Camellius, ho oh, ho, he popped his head out of the bush, had a sneaky look, and because of that, Camellius knew he was hiding. And now we see Lunsus securing the Drake for his team. Number three, next one for either side is going to end up being sold. And at this point, the main focus is going to be the Baron. We can see on Go's side, they're not going to have Mordecai, so Siri and Rakan flashes up for a long time. Lunsus and Tsukui are going to have theirs up in time for the, for the fight. And on the other side, Alip, as well as Golden Toast and I Levi are going to be waiting patiently for their flashes too. Um, these are the summoners the teams are going to keep in mind before the fight starts. Um, of course, not <laughs> generally uh, the most enjoyable uh, position for Kindred still, as she is still not having four marks. Sitting on three marks, 36 minutes in, it's a difficult, difficult game for Spooky. But he walks up, slightly over here again, and Ragnar looks for the wolves. Wasn't back with the claw. Spooky versus Ragnar here, and Spooky has to flash away. No ultimate on him. Five seconds on it. He manages to dash away towards the backside. The second coming out from Linkers as well. And away the charm onto I Levy. He's, he's been locked up for a moment. Aleph doing a lot of work through the event horizon. Going in with the unstoppable force as well. Linkers is the GA out. Anathos is a little bit split as this fight continues to erupt. Lamb's rest by going down. Jezu hopped into his GA. Linkers going to fall. Anathosis. They can get two here. Jezu with his first death of the EMEA Masters and now Baron on the cards for the Greek team. They are able to do work in these fights. They're pretty well coordinated. Started a little sketchy uh, with Spooky getting called out, but it worked out well for him as he managed to escape. Mordecai's ult wasn't available for Rakhna anymore. And essentially it was just a five head play, completely fading goals to take uh, what turned out to be a pretty terrible fight. So we see Spooky here lingering around the corner, buying a lot of time. In just a moment, getting out of Mordecai's ult. Barely manages to escape because the event horizon from Vega comes in over the wall, creating so much space for the team. Golden Toast is free hitting. Look at the side ahead. Absolutely no one is able to hit him. And that's the key thing that went wrong. Go. If you cannot reach the enemy carriers, you cannot do anything to Vega, to Sire, 
sorry to tell you, but there's just no way you're going to win these fights. They have to recognize that earlier, they didn't, and Aphosis managed to take advantage of it, and now, once again, have the Baron and the 4.5k gold bleed. At this point, we're so late in the game, sure, there's another dragon spawning in two and a half minutes, but at this point, they're going to want desperately to get the final tier 2 and ideally an inhib as well. If they can crack an inhib, it's going to bring so much pressure to them that will then make it easier to get soul in a little bit. Yeah, but you can want whatever you want, Proxer. Spooky's wanted a fourth stack for the last 38 minutes. Oh, and it's he's so still only, still only sitting at three. Level 17 and three stacks on the Kindred. Definitely been a bit of a struggle for him. Camellia's going in. Oh, I levy. That was absolutely absurd. He blocks the Makarnas. He tries to get in on Supple Force as well. Used on towards the back line. Spooky trying to do the damage. Link is going in. Golden Toast locked up for a second. Dashes out. The Event Horizon saving him. The Charm hits Ho-Ho instead of hitting the back line. But Golden Toast will fall. Event Horizon coming out. Ho-Ho with another Dark Matter raining from the skies as Ragnar chases them out. In the end, it's a three for three. Both teams walk back to base, licking their wounds. But Anothosis want to continue pushing in as Jezu has to reset. So Look does Ragnar. Vega autos in that turret. He can literally hit the yeah, turret. He's got some AP. 1,300 so AP now, by the way. Holy moly, that is Vega. a big, big Vega. Ho ho. Refusing to lose this game, turning into an absolute monster. Now. That's what the fight play out once again. Golden Toast and Alip part of the top lane looking for the tier 3. Camellius tries to go for the engage but gets completely denied. We do see both Linces and Ragnar finding some good flanks. However, and while Jesu this time is able to hit, um, Golden Toast having a hard time following. Look at this Vega damage. Boom. Both Vega as well as his good old friend Malphite were able to buy so much time for themselves. I believe Ragnar actually used Mordecai to ult on Alip again, which is uh, turning into a little bit of a bad habit of his. Uh, not something we would like to see if again if we can avoid it. <laughs> but, I mean, his options, I think he used to by the end of the fight, so his options were Haw Haw or Alip. And I'm going to be honest, that Vega, he might be small, but damn is he mighty. I'm not sure I want to lock myself <laughs> in a death realm with him. You, you, you think that big, scary Mordecai is afraid of the little yordle? Yes, Maybe yes, I do. Possible. Elephants are afraid of mice, okay? I'd be afraid of a yordle too. The uh, flank from Linkus here, not really going to get you too much. Hex soul, the next objective to fight over. Linkus is waiting there. What is it with Team Go and just not living up to their name? He's stopped here. Instead of going anywhere for the last 30 seconds, he's not spotted... I. Oh, maybe he was spotted? A couple of pings come out up, on it. The blue up sees him. The blue up sees him. It sh he was in a bush. Was he just outside of the bush? Maybe no, he was the standing. The blue up was probably right outside the bush and they were able to spot okay. him. Sneaky play from the Wukong otherwise, but now Go is able to regroup on the dragon. Are they going to fall to 50 50? Are they going to look for the engage soon? That dragon is getting a little low, starts re resetting. Ooh, maybe it's a spicy one. Yeah, Camille is still looking for this flank position. There is a ward up towards where he is. Takuri looking for the same. Alib locked up. There we go. Golden Toast getting the Hexex soul. And Ragnar is already low. Horhor is going to take him out. Camille is going to fall as well. And of those, this Famagusa looking for their second win in the tournament. Looking to be the first team to take down Go. But Go are having none of it. Jezu dashing forward. Horhor so low. Jezu takes him out, but he'll die for the favor. Spooky trading down towards the bottom side. Ends up in a one for one. But Golden Toast and Alif are still alive. Alif can try and stop Linkus's banks. Has the TP as well. Reset TP back in. Is this it, Broxer? It surely does look like it, Medic. The second place coming out of the GLL, the Greek League. Absolutely dismantling go in this team fight. There's another wave coming in the mid lane. Lunsus is all on his own for a long, long time. And at this point, being a Wukong on your own versus Malphite versus five item Sire, there's just nothing you can do. Huge offset here coming out of Anaphasis, but they are showing that they are a good team, their region should not be underestimated, and they're here to play. Yeah, what a performance all around by Anaphasis. Like, absolutely incredible that they were able to pick up the win there. Obviously, they still have one more game to go today. They will play up against SK Gaming Prime later in what could be a match to decide if they go through 
to the quarterfinals. Uh, Riddle as well have a game later on versus Team Goat. Uh, and one against SK Prime up next. So, wow. That group, the group is so much spicier now. Like, if, I thought we were just going to have SK Gaming Prime and, and Riddle fighting out. But we'll have another look at this because Anorthosis get an early lead from this play. And then from there, they were just able to control the game, even though it was a little bit messy at times. Yeah, I think overall, what impresses me about uh, their performance is that they were not just winning any of these fights randomly. They were playing really good macro, usually one step ahead of Go. And while uh, Spooky had a couple of hiccups and got caught out a little more than he should have, while he wasn't able to pick up any marks on the Kindred, Ho Ho and Golden Toast ended up getting so powerful on the carries. And because they all always had the vision control, it was really, really hard for Go to reach the back line and shut them down. They were just, you know, standing there dealing way too much damage. They really were. Ho Ho having a, a great performance as well. His positioning on the Vega, his ability just to output damage in these fights. That, alongside Levy, actually, I have to give credit to I Levy. His ability to uh, stop the engages on this rel made the game winnable. And, uh, in the end, Team Go felt by the, the most unlikely of opponents. I think a, a lot of people would have looked at an Autosys as, as the team to get knocked out here. Uh, but from Plains, they've shown they are always willing for a scrap and they continue to show us that they're not quite done yet. And this is the beauty of international tournaments, right? You may think that on paper, LFL is going to be near unbeatable uh, for a team coming from the GLL, but they show that they're here to play and they actually, you know, are a strong region. Just across the board, um, stepping up massively. We see it here on the damage charts as well. Obviously, Jesu and Tsukui was able to dish out quite a bit of, of damage, both actually more than their counterparts, but it simply doesn't matter. Worth having a look at the gold graph as well, because <laughs> while Anaphasis had some gigantic throws, um, especially in the later st stages of the game, they always found a way to climb back and to, you know, really reset and, and regain control of the game. And they did. We're going to hear from one of their players in just a moment. I believe Ho Ho is standing by. Congratulations, my dude. What a, what a game. Uh, like, can you oh. just talk me through how intense the end of that game must have been for you and your team? Uh, so let's just say I have, I'm shaking right now. I was shaking a bit during the game. Uh, obviously, we didn't really expect to be able to beat this team. Uh, we lost to Riddle. We, you know, and Geo is a really strong team. So just playing against them. And we were in a good spot for a lot of the game, I feel like. And it was still scary, you know? They're a really good team. Uh, I was always thinking they have, they're going to find a way to come back or they're going to be looking for it all the, way, all the time. It's not free. It's not over. And I was, I was really into it. In the end, I was screaming. I was really emotional. Uh, and I'm just very happy. Yeah, you should be. It was a great performance. Obviously, there was a lot on the line uh, this game, as you just spoke about. Emotional moments, so much stress, pressure. So I was wondering, what led to you deciding to go for the Vega? Uh, so I played a lot of Vega throughout my, my career. I haven't had the longest career, but uh, generally, I think Vega into Ari is really good, and Vega into Dash champions in general. Like, into Wukong, I think it's good. Into Rakan, it's really good. And they were showing... Seri, Rakan, Wukong, Ari, and we were thinking about going Cillian. Okay, I'm not gonna, sp I'm not gonna spoil large, <laughs> but I, I was thinking about going my Cillian. You, you going oh, Cillian yeah. isn't really a surprise. I'm gonna be honest. Man. Yeah. Like... <laughs> but uh, I was thinking Vagar looks too good here, and even though he was nerfed a little bit, uh, I thought it was looking good. And also, I'm good friends with Vagar V2, and he's taught me some Vagar tricks throughout the years, uh, so I feel confident on that jump. Well, you had a great performance on it. You've got one more game uh, remaining today versus SK Gaming Prime. Obviously, you, you want to win that. And obviously, it's still, even if you win that, your fate isn't in your own hands when it comes to qualification for the quarterfinals. But 
do you feel in your current form that like you are deserving of that second place in the group? I feel like the second place in the group could go to any of any of the teams, basically. Uh, you know, we're in a group with really good teams. I'm just a little guy in my room gaming, you know. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm just happy to be here, basically. But of course, I would love to be in the top two. And, you know, we beat Geo. The other teams didn't beat Geo. So yeah. why don't we deserve it, you know? I really hope we can get through Oh, it'll be an incredible story if you're able to make it through. Uh, thank you so much for talking to us. Is there anything you want to say before we uh, we round out the interview? Mm, well, I can say hi to my mom. I think she's watching. Hey, mama. <laughs> and <Hello>. that's it. <laughs> well, thank you, guys. Con congratulations again. It was an incredible game to watch. Uh, I hope you enjoyed playing it as much as we enjoyed watching it. So thank you again. Yes, I definitely did. Thank you so much. Excellent. Well, up next, uh, we're actually going to swap casters, I do believe. It's uh, Sheen and Dangto who are going to take it away. They'll bring you Heretics versus GK after this break.